Conor Murphy. I now call the Minister, Conor Murphy. Where am I? I've got last can call uh, and I welcome the opportunity to make a statement on the outcome of the 2020-21 provisional outturn and the Executive's June monitoring exercise. While I advise of these by way of a written statement, today's oral statement will allow members an opportunity to engage more fully on these important issues. Before turning to the current year, I want to update the Assembly on the 2020-21 provisional outturn and resulting budget exchange position. Last year, the unprecedented levels of COVID-19 funding, the late notice of much of this funding and the rapid establishment of unique support measures created a very real prospect of returning significant underspend to the British Treasury. In the absence of bids from other departments, my department established contingency measures to put this money to good use by supporting businesses. As a result of these contingency plans and good budget manage management by many departments, I am pleased to say that no resource or conventional capital deal has been lost to the Executive. The underspend reported back by departments together with central adjustments has resulted in the carry forward of £85.7 million resource deal and £17.8 million conventional capital deal. Unfortunately, the underspend of £55.6 million for ring fence financial transactions capital does exceed the amount which can be carried forward by £26.4 million, meaning that 28.5 per cent of FTC lending has been lost through underspend. While it is an improvement on the 2019-20 position, where £72 million was lost, it is nonetheless disappointing. It does, however, reflect the challenge associated with identifying suitable projects that can avail of this finance, which may only be used for loans or equity investments in the private sector. The £401.9 million of underspend on ring fence resource deal, of which £395.7 million cannot be carried forward, does on the face of it seem concerning. However, this must be considered in context. This funding may only be used for the non-cash costs relating to depreciation and impairments so it is, in effect, a technical accounting issue. The majority of the underspend arose from a Barnet consequential resulting from an allocation for student loan impairments in England, which was not needed here. Given its technical nature, the loss of this underspend has no impact on the level of funding available for public services. Last Concordia, turning to June monitoring, as members will be aware from my written statement, the Executive had 149 million resource deal, 91 million capital deal, and 57.6 million financial transaction capital deal available to address pressures of a routine nature and those arising as a result of COVID-19. This funding includes reduced requirements of 20.7 million resource deal and 23.4 million capital deal. Further details are included in the statements provided with this statement. And the tables provided with the statement. As usual, the resource deal bids submitted by departments far outweighed the level of resources available. Some bids can be revisited later in the year where, when there will be more clarity on actual costs. The Executive has agreed to allocate the full level of resource deal funding available in this round, some £149 million. Full details of bids and allocations are set out in the tables which accompany the statement. However, I would like to highlight a few specific areas. I am providing £54.7 million to the Department of Health, including £31.5 million to aid with pressures in elective care. This will help with waiting lists in the short term. I have also written to executive colleagues seeking support for longer term plans to tackle waiting lists and transform the health service as part of the multi year budget we hope to move to. The Department of Education receives £39 million. Of this total, £35.7 million is to help with children with special educational needs. The remaining £3.3 million is for COVID-19 pressures. In light of the need to have funding in place to provide certainty for victims, an allocation of £19 million to TEO for the victims' pension, discussions continue with the British Government regarding the long-term funding of the scheme. Given some of the erroneous media reporting on this issue, I would like to clarify that the delay in launching the scheme has absolutely nothing to do with funding. The decision to delay was taken to give applicants time to familiarise themselves with the guidance and to make sure they can get the support they need before making an application. Turning to Capital Dale, I have met all the bids for Capital Dale submitted by departments, totalling £61.3 million. I am allocating £26.6 million to the Department of the Communities for a range of housing projects, including £8.3 million to the Housing Executive to help tenants with a disability adapt their property. The Department for Communities was hoping to invest £18 million this year in the development of a new stadium at Casement. However, planning permission has not yet been approved, meaning it is not possible to spend this amount within the financial year. 
Funding for this flagship scheme will instead be allocated next year. The Department for Education receives £18 million, 18 million, 14 million of which is for works to deliver additional accommodation across the school's estate. I am allocating £11.5 million to the Department of Health, including £8.4 million for the replacement of equipment, vehicles and essential maintenance work across the health estate. £1 million is provided to assist in the provision of a pilot mental health rehabilitation facility in Antrim. This facility is the first of its kind and will address an identified gap in care. An allocation of £8 million of ring fence financial transaction capital has been made to the Department of Communities in this round to assist in funding the over 55s shared ownership scheme. Having met all the capital Dale bids, bids, there remains £29.7 million unallocated. Given the position on capital Dale, I have decided to reduce the RRI borrowing by £30 million, leaving a small overcommitment of £0.3 million. This can be revisited in October monitoring, where a decision to access further borrowing can be made, depending on the capital bids submitted at that stage. £46.4 million financial transaction capital remains unallocated at the conclusion of June monitoring, and I am calling on departments to consider ways to use, utilise this lending capacity. Last concorda, this year's monitoring statements are accompanied by tables outlining the detail of changes to spent in areas within departments to aid transparency in the process. I commend the June monitoring outcome to the Assembly. Gorham Albert. Gorham Albert uh, I now call the Chair of the Finance Committee, Steve Aiken. Much indeed, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I would like to thank the Minister for his statement and indeed for meeting with me and our new Deputy, Deputy, new Deputy Chairperson earlier on today to discuss the key points within, this, within his briefing. I am sure the Committee will welcome the £149 million of resource Dell allocations as well as the £61 million of capital allocations, with communities, health, and education all benefiting. Mr Deputy Speaker, a few days ago at the final stage of the Budget Bill, I referred to the possibility of unknown and undeclared problems in the estimates, which may have gone unscrutinised. Today we see we now have an underspend of £400 million of ring-fenced Dell, all of which cannot be carried forward into 2021-22. I understand the explanation that will, this will not affect non-ring-fenced Dell spending. However, could I nonetheless ask the Minister why this very large allocation, which I believe relates, as he said, to unrepaid student loans, was made by the Treasury to the Department for the Economy in the first place, if it was not germane to Northern Ireland? Can I also why, ask why so much of this budget cover was not spent by the Department in 2021, and what the impact in future years is likely to be? Can I also ask why, during all of the scrutiny by the Committee for Finance on the Spring Supplementary Estimates and all of the related debates in this House, the size of this problem was never explicitly revealed? I would say it is not satisfactory that the Committee for Finance... Um, or Mr Aiken, the um, for maybe you weren't listening to my initial remarks, and I have allowed a fair bit of latitude because you are Chair of the Committee, but uh, so far I think you have asked four questions. Um, that will be up to the Minister as to whether he answers them or not. But uh, perhaps you could inject a bit of brevity into it, Deputy Speaker, because these are indeed important issues. They but are, I'm not but sure um, the the, the, I did outline at the start for people to be snappy and sharp. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, please just. I shall be very snappy, and I shall be very sharp. Thank you very much indeed. So, Minister, if you could answer those questions, I think we, members of the committee, and indeed the Department of Economy, would be delighted to get your views on those. Thank you. I thank the Chair. And as I said, the, the significant level uh, of that ring fence uh, resource deal was uh, Barnet consequential. It was a very significant uh, amount of impairment to student loans in England, uh, which required a very significant amount of money to be spent in England. We get the Barnet consequential as, uh, as a consequence of that. Ring fenced can only be spent on that exact area of impairment to loans. We had a very small, uh, relatively speaking, amount, and therefore the rest of that money could not be used by us. Would not be able to be allocated to any other public service, is not lost off the finances that have been available to public services and is returned back uh, to Treasury. In terms of communication with the committee, uh, I am very happy to hear from the committee if they think there was any deficit in terms of information they received in relation to that and make sure that those issues are addressed. I call Keith Buchanan. The Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister so far for his answers. First of all, it would probably be right of me just to welcome my colleague to the Chamber, Stephen Dunn. 
in case I forget, maybe not do it for the next two or three years, so you're very welcome, Stephen. Thank you. Minister, just my quick questions are relating to the financial transactions capital. You referred to there on page three and page four that there was 28.5 per cent had been lost this year, if I'm correct in saying, and 54.0 per cent last year. How can we improve on this, and can you give us a wee bit more detail of how departments can obviously utilise this so it's not consent back? Yes, I, 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 as I said uh, to him that, and, and, and in the meeting earlier that we had, the discussion earlier we had, it is an improved position on last year, but it's not to where we want it to be. Financial transaction capital spend is fairly limited in terms of what it can be used for uh, and has to be, uh, has to be very specifically in relation to a loan out to a, a, a private enterprise. And some of that was used uh, over the course of the year by departments in, a, in an improved position, uh, but nonetheless we have still uh, fallen short. So we will continue to remind and, and familiarise departments if they are not familiar with the, the rules and regulations. I know there was interest in both it and in RRI borrowing from departments, uh, but when you then, uh, I, I suppose, distil down as to what, what uh, some of the schemes they had considered are, are actually qualifying and can, can access that type of facility, then it, it reduces down that. But I think there is an improved position, which is good, but there's more work to be done. We will continue to engage with departments in the time ahead and make sure they understand fully how that will be utilised, and the ambition will be to fully utilise this in the next budget. I call Melissa McHugh for a question. Because the boys boy them so yanni faster for hanya and righteous listen Ira Ira at the case dog um art um uh Minister uh does the nineteen million for the victims uh pension scheme does that allow that scheme to commence this year? Uh and in the event of the British government not stepping up to the plate to support this scheme, how long can it continue for? Well, the executive has given a commitment, uh, including a commitment in the courts, that the scheme will go ahead, and it is going ahead. There is some slight delay, I think, uh, in relation to it. The £19 million that he has identified uh, has been the amount of money that the, the Department of Justice estimate, because this is based on, on people coming to access the scheme, uh, estimate would, could be used within this financial year, and we have committed uh, to doing that. Of course, our dialogue uh, continues with Treasury. We have uh, we have challenged them that, according to their own statement of funding policy, that the department uh, and the, 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 the government, which designs the scheme and legislates for it, is responsible for the cost of it. And that discussion uh, continues with the Treasury. And uh, I did go over a number of weeks back to meet the Chancellor of the Exchequer. I had this discussion with them, and we have heard back from them since, and we are continuing to exchange with them. So there is no doubt, given the estimates that we have, and this is all based on estimates, uh, that the cost, uh, not necessarily this year, which is the beginning of the scheme, but certainly over the next four to five years, uh, it tapers off beyond that then uh, over the lifetime of the scheme, but in the next four or five years would, would be beyond the affordability of the executive. Here, Mayor Matthew Tull, for your cash. I call Matthew Tull for a Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, I welcome the allocation, the 30 million alloc allocation that's been made to the Department of Health and Elective Care, particularly given in an earlier answer to my colleague Mark Durkin, you, you said that you personally didn't have the power to allocate uh, money to the Department of Health. I notice this statement says I am providing uh, 31.5 million to the Department of Health. So I, I welcome that uh, a cha change of heart in terms of who allocates the money. Um, but can I ask, uh, Minister, about the reduced RRI borrowing? You said that might be allocated later in the financial year. Isn't it better, however, to come up with potential places to allocate that money earlier in the financial year rather than later? Because while you're right that we will have more information later in the financial year, it will, by definition, be more difficult to deliver it within the time uh, of this financial year, if we leave it? Well, can it lastly be un, under any misunderstanding? Can I say to him, I make this statement on my behalf. The executive agrees the allocations that I propose to them. I would have thought after a year or so on the Finance Committee he might have grasped that uh, at this stage. Uh, in relation to RRI, there, we had more capital available uh, than was needed, uh, than was bid for by departments, and therefore it made more sense to use that conventional capital rather than getting into. RRI borrowing for some of the capital had been identified. Of course, we can access that throughout the course of the year, and uh, I would welcome very much if departments have other ideas to come forward uh, in relation to that. Call Andrew Muir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and like Mr. Buchanan, I'd like to welcome Stephen Dunn to the chamber today. Um, 
My, my question is really in relation to capital funding. Within the statement, it is clear that there was £91 million in uh, capital funding available, but there was only £61.3 million in bids that were made, which were all fully fulfilled. Uh, that is very concerning from my perspective, in light of also the increase in construction costs. And I really want to ask the Minister, is he confident everything is being done to ensure we maximise the capital funding available? There is also the issue of FTC, which has been talked about. Uh, and There have been numerous reports that have come out about the need for joined up working and collaboration, and also the case for an infrastructure commission. So is the Minister confident everything is being done to ensure we can shift this capital funding and uh, invest in our green recovery? Well, I think I mean this is early in the financial year. This is the first monitoring round exercise. So most departments will have got or all departments will have got their capital allocation only at the start of April. Uh, and so the likelihood that some of them would already assess that they hadn't enough capital and come forward with uh, significant bids for it was probably slim. Uh, as the year rolls on and perhaps the, uh, there is a feature in relation to costs, there also will be other features that come in that actually reduce capital spend through planning exercises and various hold-ups in, uh, that uh, happen over the course of significant capital projects. So it's not surprising that there isn't a, a huge bid for capital this early in the financial year from departments, an additional bid on top of the capital they already got. We, we had while we had a standstill budget in terms of resource, we had some extra money in terms of capital, so departments will have got uh, perhaps uh, a better allocation in that regard. Uh, so we will, of course, continue to monitor this. We will continue to engage with departments. Uh, we do not want to see any uh, underspend. We want to see money managed properly, and we will engage over the course of the year to make sure that that is the case. I call Gemma Dolan for question. Um, Minister, this £31.5 million provides an immediate injection of funding for waiting lists. What are your views on how to provide longer-term funding to bring down waiting lists, and can this be done as part of a multi-year budget? Yes, well, I, I think I mean this is helpful in the in the short term. Uh, there's no doubt about that uh, for the department, but uh, as myself and the health minister agreed on many times uh, what we need is longer term recurrent funding and we can only do that over a multi-year budget scenario where we can actually employ the people to do that other than that you can spend money uh, going to the private sector in quite a lot of cases to try and reduce weight in this but it doesn't fix the ongoing problem uh, of the ability of our own health service uh, to manage uh, those in the longer term so the, the longer term solution to this is through health transformation, is through uh, that longer term plan that the Health Minister has outlined, uh, and is ensuring that we have the right number of staff working in the NHS to be able to deal with these issues into the future. Pat Catney for a question. I call Pat Catney for a question. Um, Minister, um, I read with interest about the number of development led capital projects that have been funded starkly through uh, FTC, and I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. It strikes me that the maze Long Cash development in my constituency of Long Cash would be a perfect project to award this funding to. Given this historic underspend in FTC, will you push the First and Deputy First Ministers to bring forward plans for the site that could maybe utilise this funding? Thank you. Well, I think I know the members of constituency interest there, but I think he's correct, regardless of that, in that there is enormous potential for that site, uh, and it's long overdue that it was uh, properly developed. Uh, and so, I would look forward to the development plans being brought through the executive office and into the executive, uh, and and for. Uh, for a spend to be attached to that, and it's obviously very timely if we are heading into a budgetary plan and exercise now over the over the summer and into the autumn. Then this is the time uh, to identify what's required for that. Call Roy Beggs. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for for his question, for his, for his statement so far. He reports that uh, in last financial year, some 19.2 million of financial transaction capital was returned to the Treasury unspent and that there's some 57.6 million available this year but only 46 uh, sorry but 46.4 million remains unallocated uh, now this can be useful to develop social housing if the housing sector were restructured it could help fund housing through it if northern Ireland water were restructured there's potential there so my question to the minister how is he going to ensure that we are going to make good use of this large amount of money that remains unallocated and can we afford to wait until the October monitoring round to ensure that it can be well spent in this financial year? 
Well, I think I mean, some of the suggestions he has in relation to Housing Executive or, or Northern Ireland Water then obviously require a much longer period in terms of if those organisations were to tr transform themselves or uh, to, to uh, move into a position where they could access this. Uh, there are other opportunities to access it with the departments, and we have improved the picture from last year, which was, I think, uh, uh, Oh, speaking all the time ahead, but I think something like £90 million pounds perhaps returned last year. I, I may be uh, incorrect in that figure, but it was certainly a, a larger amount, uh, and it has improved. Uh, it's getting departments to understand how this can be utilised and to get them involved in that. And of course, there is a longer term transition process in relation to a number of arms length bodies that might mean that this, this is more readily available of in the years ahead. But we do want to see the picture improving over the course of the year. We will continue to engage with departments, not wait until October month and round, but in between, in between time we will continue to engage to ensure they understand the opportunities that there are with this, uh, this uh, facility and to make sure that they bring forward schemes to avail of it. Anish Iram, sir, Colum Gilda New for your cash. I call Colum Gilda New for a question. Cormi Agat, last year I called you. Um, Agus Cormi Agat, uh, Legend Ira. Minister, you have allocated 5.1 million towards the A5 and the A6 projects. Will this allocation ensure progress on these important road infrastructure projects in this year? Cormi Agat. Yes, uh, undoubtedly it will. And, and uh, obviously, in relation to A5, there are other issues to be overcome in, in terms of uh, inquiries and uh, other matters that have held up that project, which uh, really has been far too long in, in, the, in the delivery. Uh, and uh, certainly in relation to A6, I know from travelling that road that, that there is significant progress being made there. So I look forward to the day when there is that connection into the North West, both through the A5 and the A6, improved railway links as well, and the pr improved connectivity from the City at Area Airport. And I think that uh, fills, in the terms of the island's infrastructure, a very significant gap in relation to the North West. I call Paula Bradshaw. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Minister, for your statement this morning. Um, just turning to the £31.5 million for elective care, and we in the Alliance Party are, are delighted to see that. We very much welcome the approach that the Health Minister has taken in, re in regards to this. I, I have wider concerns, Minister, in that we have over £6 um, billion pounds are, is spent on health every year, and um, whenever we are scrutinising the Health and Social Care Bill, I have raised some concerns around how services are commissioned as such. You know, how can we spend so much money and so still have such huge waiting lists? I am just wondering how your department is engaging with the, the Department of Health around this new Health and Social Care Bill in terms of how they are going to commission and then fund services, because we can't keep having these small amounts of money dropped in on it. We need proper reform of financial management. Thank you. Well, I, I don't disagree that, that we need that longer-term approach, and that is possible under a multi-annual budget setting. It's very difficult year to year when the Department of Health, you know, last November finds out it has basically the same budget this year as it had last year, and it only has a one-year budget. So the executive, as, as you know, has prioritised health. Uh, I'm sure it will continue to prioritise health, but we want to get to a scenario where the health transformation, the, the dealing with more acute issues like the waiting lists, the workforce planning, all of these issues are properly funded and planned over the years ahead uh, so we can actually deliver that longer term change. Other than that, we end up in a situation like this where we are trying to fix acute problems by in-year injections of cash. That is welcome, but it is not the long term solution. Declan McAleer for your cash. I call Declan McAleer for a question. Uh, I thank the Minister for her statement. Uh, I suppose <laughs> the point I want to make today is express disappointment that DERA has not bid for any money from the June monitoring round. And this is even worse, given the fact that £20.9.7 million capital funding that has been allocated. And we are looking at other departments, like the Department of Communities, that have successfully bid for similar work that DERA carries out. For example, the Department of Communities £1.7 million for Climate Change Fund that brings into question the forward, flan forward planning ability within DERA to scan the horizon for, for needs that are there. And this is something that I flagged up here repeatedly, and it is very disappointing for rural communities that uh, there has been no bids from DERA uh, at this time, and it is something that we need to follow up on. But in terms of a question, you know, could the Minister outline um, the rationale as to why DERA requested to reclassify 1.6 million of resource Dell? In the capital deal for the common market um, organisation funding, Karim Ogut. Yeah, there was a, there was an issue where there was an ability to transfer uh, that resource uh, or capital into resource. Uh, 
I, I think it's, it's a fairly complicated issue, but what I would be happy to do is ensure that the uh, finance officials can write to yourself and your committee to, to give an explanation for, uh, for that. Daniel McCrossan for a new case. I call Daniel McCrossan for uh, Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for the statement so far. Minister, since 2010, you will be aware the school budgets have received savage cuts approaching 10 per cent. Indeed, children in NI were among the most disadvantaged in any other jurisdiction. The money has never been restored, and the Department of Education have constantly made bids to your department. For example, this year, £116 million sought and £39 million delivered. When will you, Minister, prioritise education, or is it not a priority for your party or yourself, Minister? Well, he knows that it is the executive that sets the priorities, including his own minister, uh, and the executive agrees those priorities, including his own minister, and I presume speaking on behalf of his party. Uh, and we have made health uh, the priority for the executive. We also, of course, try to prioritise education as well, because the uh, the education of our young people and, and support for our young people is hugely important, and that's why, in terms of this, I think they're the single largest recipient of funding uh, in this uh, monitoring round, uh, and in particular in relation to special education needs. The executive can only deliver the budget that it receives. Uh, and while we w wish to prioritise things, and we will continue to prioritise, particularly in relation to health, then when we get a, an annual budget of the same amount, it in effect means a cut. So while departments may well bid and identify pressures, and there was something uh, uh, like one point, uh, I think it was 1.3 billion pounds worth of additional pressures across all departments were identified ahead of the budget that could not be met. Uh, it, it gives you a sense of the scale uh, of the uh, impact of eight or nine years of austerity policies coming from Westminster and the effect they have had on delivery of public services. So education is not on its own and suffering there, uh, and it will be uh, supported wherever we can find uh, money supported. But the executive decide the allocations of these funding, the executive decide the priorities, uh, and we have prioritised health at the time ahead. Graham, I get last time call you, and thank you to the Minister for his statement. Um, Minister, the statement indicates that the £18 million uh, pounds that was allocated for the delivery of Casement Park could not be spent because the, um, the planning permission was not yet approved. Can the Minister give assurances that, uh, you know, that, that it is a priority for, for him as an executive flagship project and that he will uh, ensure that the necessary funds are found um, if, when they are needed to deliver Casement Park? Yes, well, we had allocated in, in full what was anticipated to be required for this year, uh, and unfortunately, the delay in planning has pushed that back. It means that the capital amount, and because it's ring fenced, because it's a flagship project, it means that the Department of Communities has to return then what, what uh, is unspent in relation to that. But it is an agreed flagship project for the executive. It was uh, part of the NDNA commitments in terms of that, so I fully expect it, it uh, to be funded into the future, and whatever is is uh, needed then for the, the years beyond next year then will be provided uh, by the executive. I call Jim Allister. Thank you. I want to return to the issue Mr McCrossan raised. Uh, the outcome for education is devastatingly disappointing. Not a penny for school maintenance, not a penny for delegated budgets, two of the most crying needs in our community. And yet when one looks at the Department of Communities, a department which was so overfated with funding during COVID that it squandered it on golf clubs and others besides, and again, it's a key winner here, even though communities had a 20% underspend on its ring fence a, a resource, and large reduced requirements on its non-ring spends uh, and on its capital, yet it again is a winner, and education, one of our biggest needs, is a loser, particularly on school maintenance and delegated budgets. Well, as I said, education probably gets the largest single allocation from this monitoring round. Uh, and you know, I know he's personally not responsible, but the people who cheerleaded the Tories into power from this part of the world, who sustained them in power when they had opportunities to change government uh, in Westminster uh, over this time. I haven't heard him criticising them for that uh, decision. Uh, they are responsible for ultimately the deficit that we find in education and all of the other budgets. As I say, over a billion pounds of unmet pressures across all of our budgets, a consequence of nine years of cheerleading the Tories into power and sustaining them in power when there were alternative opportunities for different governments. Jerry Carl for your question. 
Uh, like the Minister of Statement, uh, a bit more detail, please, on the elective care money for waiting lists. Uh, did the Minister give a breakdown of where that money will be spent? What proportion of it will be spent on the private or independent uh, providers? And if not, uh, when will we, uh, he, receive that information? Thank you. He will have to go to the Department of Health for that breakdown. Uh, and uh, as as I was saying in, in response to previous answers, what we find is in a situation where we have to try and give emergency money, if you like, to that. The, the tendency in the health department has been over the years to use the private sector to try and reduce waiting lists. He will know, I'm sure he agrees with me, that the longer term solution to this is to have the sufficient amount of staff working within our health service to be able to, uh, to, to take care of the, the people that have to be taken care of uh, within the population. That's the long term solution that I want to get to. Here, Mayor Justin McNulty for your cash. I call Justin McNulty for a question. My August, last concord, Minister, I note the previous question or a previous question in relation to Casement Park and the planning permission. And you talked about the delays to that planning permission. Can you confirm that you have budgeted for the additional spends that will be necessary as an outcome of that delayed planning permission being granted, hopefully, in the not too distant future? Well, what I had confirmed was that we had given uh, as part of our budget allocation in the uh, in the budget which was just passed through the Assembly. The money that was anticipated was required for casement over the course of this year. So that was already given to the Department of Communities and ring-fenced, I think it was £20 million ring-fenced for casement. It, that now will not be required in total because the plan and permission delay means that the construction has not started as soon as we would like to have seen it. Uh, what is required uh, or what will be required over the course of this financial year is available to communities. And what will happen is the amount of money they now anticipate they can spend will be returned uh, because it is ring fence money for that specific project. Of course, it is a flagship project, it is an NDNA project, it is committed to by the executive, and it will be seen through. Thank you, members. That concludes questions on the statement. So, members, just take their ease while we move to the next topic. Thank you.